Michael O'Leary, Group CEO of Ryanair. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Uh, I want to ask you, um, first of all, about Ryanair's purchase of of all of these houses near your base at Dublin Airport in in Swords, because it's attracted a lot of criticism, including from the housing minister, Darrell O'Brien. Well, he went so far as to say it was frustrating. Were you surprised at that reaction or were you expecting it? No, not particularly. Like politicians will always pander to whatever media storm is going on at any given time. I think we have to put it in some context. We bought um, just about 40 houses in the Swords area close to Dublin Airport. Out of uh, last year, the government delivered or there was a total of 32,695 new houses built. So take a, deduct our 40 houses, there's 32,655 houses available for families who want to buy them. Mm-hmm. Don't see it as being an issue. But my job here is to make sure that we have accommodation for, we have young cabin crew we recruit each year. They come, some of them are Europeans, some come from the country in Ireland. They have to come to Dublin. And the difficulty we've had for the last number of years is we have we're them renting accommodation in City West and uh, around the outskirts of Dublin, all of which are fine, no issue with the property, but they're not accessible to Dublin Airport. And there's no public transport to get them to Dublin Airport either early in the morning or late in the evening. So had Ryanair been renting those premises in, in those other places up to now for staff? No, staff pay for the rent them themselves, uh, but what they have to do, what we have to, what, by buying these houses, what we're able to do now is to facilitate with, with rental properties that are just one bus stop from Dublin Airport. Mm-hmm. So it's easy and adjacent to the airport for our cabin crew. Yeah, because you had local... Oh, and by the way, and I would apologise to nobody for it. Well, our first job in this... Con- no, okay. sorry, our no, first job here yeah. is to look after our passengers Fair and enough. our second job is to look after our staff. Fair enough, but, but you know... And, you, you and do if have anybody the... else wants to whinge about it, they can buy one of the other 32,555 right. houses have... that have been built last year. All right, but you, you know that there are local representatives in the area and they're representing maybe even some of your own staff who would have been yep. waiting to buy those houses and a big giant like Ryanair comes in and scoops up all of those homes and takes 40. them out of the reach. I know, but, but what, what do you say to those people who were there, Nothing. sitting there with their deposits waiting to buy? Nothing. My job is to provide accommodation for my cabin crew. There will be 40 other uh, houses and apartments available elsewhere in Dublin this summer uh, because Ryanair Ryanair staff won't be renting those houses or properties. But I have absolutely nothing to apologise for. I'm very proud that we are able to invest in affordable accommodation here for our staff and that is here in Swords uh, where we employ many thousands of people and we can guarantee and deliver good, clean, affordable accommodation for our staff. Mm-hmm. Apologise to nobody. But obviously it's an economic decision for you, right? Because you, you did you find you weren't able Absolutely. to attract staff? No, I think we're able to attract staff. But I mean, the frustration and the difficulty is, you know, the accommodation has been tight in Dublin for the last number of years. In fairness to the government, I think there's now a lot of new property coming online. I mean, I think the government deserves some commendation, including the housing minister, for if there's 33,000 new houses delivered last year, the thing is going in the right way. But we have to have, particularly, and you know, our cabin crew would be among the lower paid staff we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, pilots can rent anywhere, they're well paid. Uh, and our, uh, the, the cabin crew seniors are well paid. But the, the new arrivals yeah. start on the lowest level of pay and we have to have affordable accommodation. Well, though. you know now what they'll be saying, and my screen will light up, pay them more so that they can pay their rent at the market level. It's not actually an issue of rent. They've no difficulty paying the rent. The difficulty is the availability of accommodation close to Dublin Airport. Mm -hmm. If you're renting in City West and you need to report here to Dublin Airport at five o'clock in the morning for an early shift, there's no transport. The issue here is we need to have affordable accommodation adjacent to the airport so our people, particularly the crews who work or have to report early in the morning or who get in late in the evening in the summers, have reasonable access, easy access to that accommodation. So, so and if we've bought 40 airport, uh, we've bought 40 homes in our houses uh, and apartments here in Swords. It gives accommodation for about 140 bedrooms. I am nothing but proud of it. Mm. And tell me how it will work then. So Ryanair will charge the staff a lower rate of rent than they would find on the open market. Is that how it works? Yes, for the first 12 months. They'll be going in here on discounted uh, rents and then they'll pay market level rents uh, after for the second year of employment, generally because most of them get promoted uh, into higher pay cabin crew supervisor jobs after 12 months of working here. Mm. So... You, you could be facing the prospect of those first batch of people who move in. I mean, the, given the way the housing market is, they, they might not be able to find anywhere else to go. So you could need 40 more pro- properties in 12 months' time. 
I doubt it. Uh, generally speaking, what tends to happen here with our cabin crew is, you know, they start off typically on salaries of between thirty to 40000 in the first year. They get then, once they're promoted in year two, they're on salaries of between forty to 50000 They've established connections. Most of them then tend to want to go and rent something, groups of them together, in whatever area of Dublin they wish to live in. Mm-hmm. The pay in Ryan areas is high. They're well able to afford the accommodation. And at that stage, once they spend 12 months in Dublin, they either have access to their own transport or they can have, um, or they are, are familiar with the public transport. Okay, so are you having to do this in other regions uh, where you operate from? Not really. I mean, we don't have that. Uh, the, the, we don't have the the, the, the tight uh, supply of rental accommodation in any of the other cities where we have bases. I think this is a legacy issue. I mean, that has, uh, the government's been dealing with over the last number of years, and I think this is clear that the government are getting on top of that uh, shortage of accommodation uh, by having more uh, developing more or more more properties being developed in recent years. And mm-hmm. what I find slightly ironic is that most of the people who complain about uh, Ryanair's action here in Swords are people from Sinn Féin and the left-wing parties who have been uh, the people who object most to new housing and planning applications. Well, I think there have been, been objections from politicians right across the political spectrum and, and that issue I, I has been I think you find far so more of them on the left in the opposition parties than the government well, parties. Listen, are you going to have to do more of this now? If we have to, we certainly will, but I don't think we'll have to. Is this a space you want to be in, Ryanair, the landlord? No, I mean, look, it's not. We have other things that we need to be getting on with. You know, Dublin accounts is a very small part of our overall operation. Mm -hmm. But if we have an issue that affects recruitment, training and uh, the, the accommodation for our people in any particular uh, market in which we operate, we'll try to address it as best we can. So are you saying that if we hear about more Ryanair purchases of properties, we shouldn't be surprised? It's, it's a strong possibility that it could happen again. I'm not sure it's a strong possibility, Claire, but, you know, I would never rule it out. I mean, mm. we've said uh, we have four, we have 120 rooms. We generally will be recruiting about 200 new cabin crew each year in Ireland, in Dublin. Uh, and I would have thought 120 rooms would be more than sufficient for that, uh, those numbers. OK, let's uh, move on to talk about the passenger cap at Dublin Airport. And just to explain yep. to people, the Dublin Airport Authority have said it's going to be about two years before they'll be able to increase it. It's at 32 million now. They've put in a planning application to bring it up to 40 million. But you're telling them to ignore the cap, aren't you? Well, we won't. I don't actually think the DAA can't afford to ignore the cap. It's the government should be addressing this thing. Firstly, it'll take far more than two years. As we well know here, any planning application will be subject to appeal and high court litigation uh, from uh, uh, people who want to disrupt it. So we have a bizarre situation. The Dublin airport, which is currently at 32 million passengers a year, is now frozen and can't grow for, I think it's going to be at least three or four years. The, uh, this is the vital gateway on and off an island at the periphery of Europe. And we have this absolute joke of a situation where we've just opened a second runway, which creates more capacity. But now none of the airlines can grow. And from a selfish point of view, this is great for Ryanair's business. I mean, if we can't grow at Dublin Airport, it's inevitable that airfares will rise for the next couple of years. While we have a government, I would say, and a, a transport minister sitting in there doing absolutely nothing about what, what, it. Will you the explain that to me? I, I just want to be clear on that point. Why will airfares rise? Because if there's no growth, demand will continue to rise. Airfares will rise on and off the island. If there's no, if we can't grow capacity, it's inevitable that airfares will rise. Mm-hmm. I mean, we already know the DAA are going to increase airport fees by 45% over the next three years. Uh, the, regulated, the regulated charge is going up from €16.20 Euros 20 to €23.50 Euros 50 between 2023 and 2026. And those costs have to be passed on. We have environmental taxes. I heard uh, one of your left-wing contributors there recently uh, 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 rambling on about, oh, we should just tax aviation. Well, you Who know, where, you you know where that's going. I mean, uh, you I, of I all do. people I mean, know where that's going. That's lunatic. I mean, we're already, we paid 800 million in environmental taxation last year. Our passengers did an average t- tax of four euros per ticket. And so you should. Why be- should be- we? Be- because aviation is such a contributor to emissions and you know what but we're dealing with when, when it comes to the, utter, the, the climate emergency. Utterly wrong, wrong, rubbish. Aviation accounts for 2% of Europe's CO2 emissions. 2%. Road transport accounts for 26%. Mm-hmm. But, you, but you're I, calling way, for that contribution any... to grow because you want more people uh, in the air. I would call for that contribution to decline because actually the more you tax aviation, the more peripheral countries like Ireland, our citizens and visitors to this country pay far more environmental taxes. 
whereas the Dutch, the Germans and the French exempt transfer flights and exempt the long-haul flights. The long-haul flights account for more than 50% of that 2% of CO2 emissions, and yet they're completely exempt from environmental taxes. Mm-hmm. See, so we... all environmental tax on air travel does is, A, it has no effect on the environment because it's only 2%. B, more than 1% of the 2% is already exempt. And yet you have the poor people of Ireland or visitors to Ireland, on which our tourism industry depends, are being penalised with these ludicrous green taxes. OK, so what is the pathway to solving air emissions? What do you think is the solution? <sighs> Well, firstly, the solution is new technology. I mean, we're investing billions of dollars in new aircraft. Uh, For example, the Boeing aircraft, which we've now ordered, carry 20% more seats but burn 20% less fuel. I mean, nobody wants to burn less fuel than I do uh, or that the airlines do. So the new technology is dramatically reducing not just fuel consumption and emissions, but also noise emissions. And that new technology, allied to the production of sustainable aviation fuels, which were promised by about 2030 around Europe, but yet nobody is yet producing, would dramatically reduce the 2% of CO2 emission, the emissions that aviation accounts for to less than 1%. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile... Europe, which is doing a terrific job electrifying uh, road transport, I mean, most of road transport will be electrified by the mid-2030s. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's the road. That, just, that is solution good. isn't coming, though, for our skies, is it? Yeah, it can't come for our skies. There, we don't have that kind of battery technology. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the transformation of that, and again, I think Breed Smith was warbling on about transport. I mean, transport is revolutionising the way it reduces fuel consumption and it reduces emissions. And yet the Greens and the idiots on the left want to go, Let's just tax rich aviation companies. What you're taxing is the ordinary passengers who depend on our low fares to be able to get on and off this island. Mm -hmm. But we do have a a climate emergency. We have made national and international commitments, uh, you know, to reduce our emissions. And talking about expanding our airport passenger numbers by 25% is contrary to those commitments which we have made. It's absolutely not fair. I mean, if you just join up the writing, if we do that growth and that expansion on aircraft that carry 20% more passengers but burn 20% less fuel, we fully comply with those targets. All we need is to have a transport minister, though, that doesn't have a block on be on traffic growth at the only airport we have, the only significant ac- airport access we have on and off this island. Mm. Well, he, he is saying, the, is the no minister transport. is saying, that he we have to continue to promote idiot. the use of the other Irish airports, such as Cork and Shannon, where there is extra capacity. Is that not a solution, <laughs> rather than bursting through the 32 million at Dublin airport? That is the kind of stupidity that only a Green minister would give you. Let me uh, tell you, 60% of the passengers on our flights are inbound passengers. If they wanted to go to Cork, we'd fly them to Cork. If they wanted to go to Knock, we'd fly them to Knock. In fact, we already do. The vast majority of those passengers, the vast majority of the hotel accommodation is in Dublin. They want mm-hmm. to come to Dublin. But this is and the yet problem our with Dublin. Minister uh, would sit, but but, the, but Eamon Ryan Dublin. says it's that the there is intense infrastructural pressure on Dublin Airport, and anyone who's been through there in recent times knows that that's the case. Would we not be better Again, having a more balanced over. regional development? Where do you come up with this nonsense from? There isn't intense infrastructural pressure on Dublin Airport. We've just opened a second runway which increases the traffic capacity of Dublin Airport from about 30 million to about 50 million. We do need to expand the terminal facilities. That I accept. Mm -hmm. We've been pushing the DA that for a number of years. But the DAA at the moment, under Eamon Ryan's guidance as the genius minister for transport, want to blow 200 million building a stupid tunnel that goes nowhere instead of actually expanding the gates and the boarding gates, which is where the real congestion is at the airport. But this is not an environmental issue. It's just more incompetence from an incompetent minister for transport. All right, and we cannot have the main airport on and off an island on the periphery of Europe where we put up the signs and say, sorry, we're closed. But because the traffic won't go to Cork or to Knock. It could go to London. It could go to, to Edinburgh. Clear, it could go to Manchester. You're asking the government to ignore the planning regulations. And let's not forget where that got us in the past in this country and just I go know. ahead and raise the cap to 40 million. We should actually, if this government had, uh, was a, if we had a competent minister for transport, he'd be ordering both the Fingal County Council and on board Planora to immediately raise the cap on traffic at Dublin Airport from 32 to 40 million passengers. That's why we've already spent 250 million building a second runway. 
but we have an incompetent transport minister who doesn't want to touch Dublin Airport. He went missing when the security queues blew up three years ago. He went missing last year when the drones were closing Dublin Airport. And now that there's a cap on the airport, he's gone missing again. We cannot leave this. Well, he ha- so a now, bunch of in local fairness, and I'm not, even in going to, I'm not even going to push back on the fact that you've called him incompetent several times in this interview because Eamon Ryan clearly is not incompetent. So I don't even need well, to say to that. Transport, Look, he, he has said planning we decisions are made independent we, of government. We independent have an incompetent of government. transport minister who after three right. years in Listen, office... Listen, that's your view, Michael. That's fine. We've it heard is. it so many times from you, right? You. Listen, we planning... We have a survey. We have a Listen, survey can which we get, says Dublin can, is the second worst Can we move away from the personal traffic insults and talk about the fact insult. that planning it's decisions... A of fact Michael, on the performance Michael, of a green stop transport minister. talking. Planning decisions are made independently of government. That is how it should be. There, I, I can't I don't, can't think who in this country, given what we have seen in the past, would say that planning decisions should be interfered with by government. You cannot have the government of this country facilitate or stand over a programme that says our main airport is full, particularly when they've just opened a second runway that increases the capacity of that airport to 50 million passengers a year. Government must take some responsibility for what is nationally important infrastructure. And the Dublin airport is nationally important infrastructure. You have a minister who's already screwed up the traffic around Dublin. Now he wants to screw up the the potential growth for air traffic and the tourism industry in this country. And we cannot have a sign at Dublin airport that says, sorry, we're full and take four years to lift. What, by the way, was an arbitrary planning decision which was imposed when they built the second terminal about 15 years ago because they were worried about traffic, or traffic, road traffic to and from the airport. We've still since built the M50 and the M1. We have an incompetent transport minister in every area of a transport. He has failed and we need the government to do something, intervene in this area. Because this cannot be left to a bunch of objectors here in Fingal County Council. All right, listen, Michael. Because it will be blocked for four years. I'm going to leave it there. I'm sure Eamon Ryan would say that it is not his job to keep Michael O'Leary and Ryanair happy and he has a job to do. You might not like it. Ireland accounts for about 8% of our traffic. I mean, we would make more money here at Dublin Airport if Dublin Airport can't grow because the fares will rise. Mm-hmm. Right. It's in my interest Listen, to block on that, the traffic gro- I would like to okay. grow at Dublin Airport and keep fares down. Listen, leaving, the leaving that aside and, and for our listeners who have no interest in caps and the rest of it, in general terms, are you expecting airfares to rise? I know you said after COVID that that was the direction of travel to pardon the pun. I think it's inevitable. And, well, there's two things happening here, Claire, this summer. Right? Firstly, there's going to be less flights around Europe because the Airbus operators have a big engine issue with the, on the A320 aircraft. So there's going to be less flights in Europe. To counterbalance that, though, we've bought forward our fuel this year at about 10% less than we paid last year. So I think Ryanair fares this year in Europe will be flattish. But generally, airfares around Europe are going to rise. Okay. And the, but the, there is no doubt that airfares at Dublin are going to rise if the DAA go, goes ahead and puts up the fees by 45%, which they're allowed to do by the regulator over the next four years. All right, Michael O'Leary, thanks for joining us. Dublin Airport on remains the capped. Program. Thank you very much.